So there's a question that, that there's a specter that haunts the internet. And that specter is the question, is Mel Gibson making a movie? Right. And when I'm, was the last time he made one? Not that long ago, actually. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but when I was researching the segment, he did release one relatively recently. Hmm. Um, but it obviously gets no coverage and, you know, because he's uh, pretty much persona non grata at this point, for reasons that we'll explore. Um, but uh, the internet really wants Mel Gibson to make movies, certain movies about certain subjects. And so there's a lot of um, wishful thinking, should we say, on their part. Right. Uh, about the movies that he will be making. And this, this is something of a fact check on these things. Um, so we'll get into it. But before we begin, if you want to support us, go and watch our podcast on They Live. I did a, an hour-long breakdown with Callum, probably more than an hour, actually, a long breakdown with Callum about the politics and philosophy of the famous film They Live. I absolutely love this film, and I think Mel Gibson may be trapped in this slightly, actually. This is why I've brought this up, because <laughs> I think he's got some glasses on that are showing him the world in all sorts of ways. Um, and in fact, we'll, we'll get on to it then. So there are a lot of quotes from Mel Gibson, apparently from Mel Gibson, like this one. Now, this one is... Uh, possibly true. Like I couldn't find a source for this, and there are lots of uh, quotes. Now, this is this is one of the lesser quotes that are going around. Right. right. So this this quote says it's an open secret in Hollywood. These people have their own religious and spiritual teachings and their own, teachings and their own social and moral frameworks. They have their sacred texts. They are sick, believe me, and they couldn't be more at odds with what America stands for. Now, that's not the worst quote that's been attributed to Mel Gibson. No, if. If it were not coming with any of the other baggage that he has been accused of before, I, I, I think am. He, I think he. I think a lot of it's true. Okay. Well. well <laughs> yeah. If 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 you were to say this regarding Hollywood being run by a bunch of yeah. Satanists, then that would be that would be totally non-controversial. However, mm. that's. I don't think that's religion he's talking about. Therefore, that's the contention. And it's certainly not the limit of what he's been saying about these things. Right, uh, Because, I mean, now this actually does sound like something Mel Gibson would have said, although in this particular case, I couldn't find a source for this. I couldn't find an actual authentic um, place where, you know, he'd either said it on video or it had been in an interview or whatever. I couldn't find anything. But it does sound very much like the sort of thing he'd say. Uh, and I'll, I'll play a couple of clips that have been resurfacing recently to show you that this is definitely something... I mean, if, it, if he didn't say this, it's not an inaccurate summary of his thoughts, is what I think is the most charitable way of saying this. Let's play the first clip, because he's famously not a fan of Hollywood. When I came over here, I was, oh God, I was in my, my uh, mid-twenties. Right. The first time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird, paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on, because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and, it, it, and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill and it's like that mm -hmm. and then you go away and you think no that's i was wrong i mean that's insane thinking i'm paranoid i imagined that stuff that couldn't be the reason for why so and so was acting like could it mm -hmm. and then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff not specifically on no, track no. but that you could uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time, and you think, <gasps> mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Hollywood looks gross from the outside. Right? Yes, and, and and this is something that Harry and I discussed in our coverage of Mulholland Drive. And mm. by I say our coverage, I mean Harry patiently explaining to me, who was very confused about the nonsensical plot of that film, what it really meant. And if he were alluding to, for example. The casting couch, as mm. practice, as David Lynch was hinting at back yes. in the early 2000s. Well, as Harvey Weinstein famously showed exists. Yes. So if he was alluding to the fact that there is a conspiracy of silence around exploitation, mm. then he would be bang on about the sordid nature of Hollywood. And you as an outsider coming in there and, and objecting to that, being looked at as the only stranger in a bar in a Western saloon. Mm. 
again, I'm not that familiar with Mel Gibson's career aside from a couple of movie appearances. I'm going to assume that he wasn't referring to that. Well, th- that clip is clearly decades old. Yeah. Um, I th- the place that posted said it was from the 90s. I haven't been able to verify it, but it's it's clearly him giving his opinion on Hollywood. And, I mean, rem- back then... It would have been an open secret in Hollywood that the casting couch existed. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have lots and lots and lots of former child actors coming out and saying, well, I was surrounded by predators, actually. Corey Feldman, specifically. And Elijah Wood mm. have both said this. And so it seems that actually Mel Gibson is speaking to something about Hollywood that was real and is true, that there was a kind of disgusting uh, was i say quote unquote likely still is of course a disgusting and corrupt culture of exploitation as you say and this is from a later interview where you can see that he's crystallized his thoughts on it somewhat right let's watch it got full of the whole industry i mean it's a very strange place holly weird wood uh, <laughs> but it's um it's an odd place and you, you imagine all these horror stories there that you think, boy, it seems as if I'm being sacrificed over here. No, that couldn't be true. And then uh, you realize that it is true. And, and you have to, I just left for a while and um, took a couple of years off, bought a place down in Australia and started digging holes and putting up fences and birthing cattle and all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was fun, you know, it was fun. It was, it was great and it was a good breather, you know. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the, the comeback, what a comeback, Lethal Weapon. Yeah. It wasn't bad, was it? It was, yeah, it was all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the, he's a, 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 apparently he's a spiritual man. Right? Apparently he's he a, did make Passion of the Christ. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, and so for him to say you're being sacrificed seems to be an allusion to some kind of Satanism or mm-hmm. something like that in Hollywood. And, I mean, we've seen the Met Gala. Yes. <laughs> We've seen. We actually got suspended because we criticised Sam Smith's choice of attire at the Grammys. Yeah, we did get a strike for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think there is something funny going on in Hollywood. Observably so. And I think that Mel Gibson has observed that thing and he has made the mistake of speaking publicly about it. Um, and so from this, people start ascribing the most hardcore forms of conspiracy theory to Mel Gibson. Uh, You'll see this. Uh, There are quotes in here that are, as far as I can tell, not Mel Gibson quotes. Uh, Quote, Hollywood is drenched in innocent children's blood. I was introduced to these practices in the early 2000s and was threatened with serious repercussions should I ever speak out. And I don't just mean my career. My life was threatened. My family's life would be in danger. I can only talk about now as those people, those industry executives, they're all dead now. They see the blood of a sexually abused infant as the ultimate prize and say that it's highly enriched. Um, Pretty radical conspiracy theory there. Yes. Hollywood elites kill innocent children and drink their blood, uh, which is a popular conspiracy in QAnon circles. Now, I looked around for the source of this particular quote. Like with the other one, I couldn't find anything. And I could find uh, a spokesperson for Mel Gibson saying, no, this he had never said or written such a statement or anything similar. Okay. So categorically denied by Mel Gibson and the people who represent him. Uh, and the thing is, Mel Gibson has said a lot of things. A lot of things. Right. And so it's understandable why people would attribute these quotes to Mel Gibson in the light, in the absence of any actual evidence of them and take it as a kind of extrapolation as what they think he believes. The only thing I'm familiar with Mel Gibson having said before, so excuse my ignorance, was one, the famous phone call of him screaming at his ex-wife. Yeah. And two, some long-running jokes about anti-Semitism, but I don't know exactly what he said. Well, if we go to the next one... <laughs> There are a few things that Mel Gibson has said. That, I shouldn't laugh, but that, that was quite good timing. It is, it is kind of funny, to be honest. Um, so if you scroll down this, John, uh, you'll, you'll see that initially uh, it's people saying that he has said things. Right. right? And okay. Now, I'm, I'm personally not bothered about the hearsay. Oh, because, didn't he course, say something about Winona Ryder? Yep, yep. 
uh, and she she says that uh, he had uh, said various things uh, that, okay. that were I considered to be anti-Semitic. Something now, yeah. And uh, the the most uh, damning one that we can confirm seems to be in July two thousand and six right. when he was drunk and got arrested in L.A. Uh, quote after informing Gibson who was drunk that we he would be detained. The actor says, uh, effing Jews. The Jews are responsible for all the world's wars in the world. And then he asked the police officer who was arresting him, are you a Jew? And he happened to be a Jew. Right. So he's he's got something in common with Seth Rogen going around asking for... Are you a Jew? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's... It's, it's, it's pretty weird, right? Yeah. Uh, and it, there, there are other things after this, but this is... So in the light of that, it becomes less unrealistic that... In private, he may have been ranting and raving about Jews. Right. right. Uh, now, after this, uh, Gibson's publicist uh, issued a statement to the New York Times uh, saying, Gibson says, quote, I acted like a person completely out of control when I was arrested. I said things I do not believe to be true, which are despicable. I am deeply ashamed of everything I've said, and I apologize to anyone I may have offended. So, sure. Apology accepted. Done. And you can keep scrolling down this just uh, for a minute, John. Because this does go on for quite. Oh dear! Well, well, quite so a this, long is, time. this is this is what I'm saying of, of drunk. Yeah. Drunk words are often sober thoughts. Yeah. I I don't wish to defame Mr. Gibson's character because I don't yeah. know him, but there is a record here that would look very bad to the Anti Defamation League. Yeah, the ADL are not fans of Bill Gibson. Probably don't spend a lot of money on his films. Um, probably actively trying to stop him from making new movies. He's not going to Jonathan Greenblatt's birthday party. Not this year. Um, but the internet does think that he's making a movie about the Rothschilds. Oh, dear. Who better to direct, eh? Who would be more fair and charitable? Look. <laughs> it's rare that I'm worried about saying something cancelable. I'm going to take the Jose Mourinho rule here of I prefer not to speak in case I am in big trouble. Yes. Um, well, this is the thing, isn't it? Um, again, there are there are elements of the internet who are anti-Semitic, and so a rumor begins that um, famous anti-Semite Mel Gibson will be directing a movie about the Rothschild family, and this became news. Um, turns out this is not true. Right? Ah. So a tweet posted on the 3rd of January uh, included a message which claimed Mel Gibson is directing a film about the Rothschild family and hitting the New World Order. So it's kind of peak boomer conspiracism. Yeah. Right, so Kanye West was waiting by the phone for a callback. Basically, yes. Right. Uh, the, the claim, however, that Gibson is directing a film about the family is without merit, according to the person who's apparently making the film. Okay. Um, the, in 2019, reports emerged that Mel Gibson and Shia LaBeouf... Why Shia LaBeouf? So, Shia LaBeouf's had a very weird few years. So, he did Isn't... the He Will Not Divide Us thing yeah. with Trump and got driven mad by 4chan. Yeah. Then Sia decided to accuse him of touching her up. And then he had a mental breakdown and converted to being a dogmatic Catholic. Right. Okay, maybe it's not so unrealistic that it would be him then. Possibly not. Um, but uh, it was uh, described, by the, the film Rothschild they were supposed to star in was described by Variety as, quote, a dark comedy about the New York super rich. And uh, this went down well with, uh, well, one Jewish group, the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism, which said Mel Gibson's vile racist comments about Jews make his casting in this role utterly abhorrent. Um, yeah. So, yes. Uh, I will phrase this very carefully. His history of anti-Semitism may mar his ability to create a film which is palatable to modern audiences. However, if, if that were not the case, and he were, he were just purely focusing on child exploitation... There could be the oh, angle... Oh, this film isn't about child exploitation. No, no, no. But, this film's but, about the Rothschild family. Well, um, are you aware that one of Epstein's what? most recent financiers was one of the Rothschild heiresses? So there is a critique of one of the modern Rothschilds which could go down that avenue, but perhaps Mel Gibson might not have been the best <laughs> person to make that nuanced point. Yes. Of all the people to get to do that film... Wouldn't have been my first pick. No. no. Uh, and accord, according <laughs> according to uh, Gibson's publicist, again, this long-suffering Alan Nierob, who has to keep putting out these statements. I think that is a Jewish name as well. 
I, 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 I did think that, yeah. He told the Daily Beast in 2019 that the film was completely unrelated to the Rothschilds. I'm told this film is about a fictional family, hence the name Rothschild. What? Why didn't you choose a fictional name? That's right. <laughs> and um... not, not the Rothschild family to which you're referring. <laughs> completely unrelated to your premise and angle. Charitably. <laughs> what? That was a... Uh, Who's going to buy that? Perhaps a poor selection. <laughs> Why would you have of all the names? Why not Smith? Or Jones? Uh, that, yeah. But uh, in an email to Newsweek, Nirob said his client would not be directing nor was intended to direct a film or any upcoming films about the Rothschilds, uh, including that while Gibson was initi- initially offered a role, uh, it would, if it were to be made, it would not include Mr. Gibson. So it sounds like someone had some words behind the scenes saying, um, right. you do know who Mel Gibson is, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so Nirob came out and was like, yeah, no, it won't be him, actually. Um, he will not be directing nor has ever intended to direct the film and he will not be present, uh, present in it. Um, so that was just one from a couple of years ago that I thought was amusing. That why would this... I mean, the thing is, it seems, because it was... Um, was it the New York Times? No, Daily, uh, Daily Beast and... It was the New York Times. Uh, sorry, it was The Times. Uh, it was reporting on this. And so it sounds like it was something that started happening and then people started hearing that it was happening. They are like, we're not going to let Mel Gibson make a movie about the Rothschilds, are we? It was a bit wild. Mm. And then it stopped happening. Right. right. So I have no idea what that means. I'm not going to draw any inferences from it. I'm just going to say that that's something that apparently happened. Anyway, recently, the reason I started thinking about Mel Gibson was because um, Elon Musk replied to a, a blatantly anti-Semitic tweet about Mel Gibson. Do you want to, do you want to see the tweet? Okay, what, what was it? Let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, why do adrenochrome? Uh, you can do adrenochrome or you can hate the Jays. Which way, Western man? With a picture of a oh, very buff-looking Mel Gibson. Dear. And what was Elon's response? Quote, Gibson is really that buff these days? That was possibly ill-advised. Yeah, he got in a lot of trouble for that. Yes. I think he ended up deleting that tweet as well. Um, for reasons I think everyone can understand. Yeah. Uh, but the the reason that I think Mel Gibson has been uh, trending recently, and he has been trending, <laughs> is that apparently he's making a documentary about child trafficking in Ukraine. Oh, right. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. we, we've, we've actually covered that a little bit before because there is, as part of the surrogacy industry, a large trade where women are impregnated and then give birth and ship the babies overseas to rich, liberal women who don't yep. want to stretch out their figure in order to have children. And when the Ukraine war broke out, there are now de facto orphanages of these kids who have just been abandoned because they couldn't meet their quotas. So, so that's yep. something that's worth criticising. Well, the founder of Hour is a which hour is a non profit. Uh, Tim Ballard suggested in January this year that Gibson was involved in an upcoming four part docu series talking about child trafficking out of Ukraine. Um, Ballard said uh, he was spoke, speaking at a conference in Utah in January and he said, quote, Mel, you've got to help me. This is going to be expensive. I won't ask you for a direct donation, but can you help me film this? Let's film what is happening so we can get people to understand so they can support us. And if you can go to the next one quickly, uh, he said this on stage. This is the this is the conference uh, where he says this. Um, but uh, again, he just says it. There's no evidence of it. And if we go back to the article, um, the question is, well, what has is, what is Mel Gibson himself said about this? Uh, nothing. Uh, the reports of him taking part in this haven't been confirmed. Uh, and there's just nothing to it. Although the movie will apparently star Jim Caviezel, who was uh, the Jesus in The Passion of the Christ. Right and a friend of Mel Gibson. And uh, Carrie Lake tweeted about this as well. If we can go to the last one. Uh, her sat with Mel Gibson. We talked about the tragedy uh, on our border, the horrific child trafficking that was taking, uh, that was happening the day this focus was taken. And she praises him after that. Um, so is Mel Gibson making a movie? Um, indeterminate. There is no evidence to suggest he is making a movie about the things that certain elements of the internet really want him to make movies about. 
I would suggest Netflix is probably not going to pick up the distribution deal. Yes, and I, I suspect, really, there's not really anything happening here. What really is happening is that there are a bunch of people who are more conspiracy-minded, and I don't use that as an insult, uh, who view Mel Gibson as a vehicle for their ideas and the desire to see these ideas publicised, because he seems to be mildly sympathetic, at at the very least, to the position that they hold. And so they are essentially, I don't want to say creating fake news because that sounds like they don't believe what they're saying. They're trying to manifest it. I think so. Yeah. I think in a way they're trying to manifest this. Um, And I think, I mean, I think they probably have sincere beliefs as much as I might disagree with them. Um, And so I don't, I don't mean, maybe there are some that are malevolent, but, uh, but I think the reason that a lot of people have been talking about this are because they wish that this was the case. And I don't think it is the case. Um, so very sensitively, we'll leave that one there. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Brokenomics series, this episode on the debt ceiling. And if you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.